Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and today we're heading all the way back to 1998 with a little trip to BJ's. It's kind of like a Costco on the East Coast, don't worry about it. This is the final Spider-Man the Animated Series figures, box set, anything. This is the Toy Biz Monster Mayhem box set, and this pretty much cements it all, man. I mean, that's that's it, right? In terms of figures that are directly based off of Spider-Man the Animated Series with this particular box set heavily leaning towards all of Season 2, which is a nice way to kind of go out. Season 2 is one of the best seasons, introduced so many cool characters like the exclusive J. Jonah Jameson, Spider-Man, Man Spider, Six-Arm Spider-Man, the Lizard, Craven, the Punisher, and... Morbius, how fitting for today, right? On the back side, all that glorious Toy Biz box art. And you can screen grab this all if you want to read up on each of the individual characters, of course. Man, that Punisher's looking good. And then you got the barcode on the back side, in case you're in the store, BJ's, back in 1998, and you want to look it up, <laughs> see if they got any in the back and don't forget to call that toy biz toll-free customer service number now one thing i will point out i was not aware of such box set until much later because as per calling said toy biz customer service number as far as i know and as far as i recall this set was never listed on the Toy Biz customer service number, nor did I see it in any magazine. So if you do know of any advertisements for this box set before it came out, please let me know. I would love to see them because in either case, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee, specifically a coffee mug shaped like Spider-Man's head. Put a little coffee in there, that works too. This is a look at the 1998 BJ's store exclusive Monster Mayhem box set by Toy Biz. And while I got all you Spider-Man animated fans here, I just want to say, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Old toys, new toys, a whole heck of a lot of Toy Biz Spider-Man the Animated Series vids. I guarantee you'll find something here that you like. Now, let's kick it off with old Spidey. And we're going to do things right. We're going to go through all of Season 2 because he's dealing with a new neogenic nightmare. His blood is mutating. He's losing his powers. And now you got this superposable Spider-Man, which actually does look a heck of a lot more like his animated counterpart. They gave him the big eyes. Now, if this guy would have had the lighter blue, that would have been solid all the way around. But I do like this figure because it is, again, one of the closest figures we got to the actual look of Spidey in the animated series. So to end it with this box set, that's a pretty cool way to go. You can see on the back, Spider will <laughs> kind of move with you. Yeah, don't mind the big metal ratchets for the joints in each of the arms <laughs> and wrists, right? Like, that's not noticeable. My legs are a little bit loose on this. That's something I notice on all the multi-posable Spider-Man figures. They're always loose. And this one actually has two item-holding hands instead of a thwipping hand. You can kick out. You can get him doing all kinds of Spider-Man-like poses. And for back in the day, yeah, this was some super articulated action. And it was very cool. And as you can see, yeah, if this new one would have just had that lighter blue. Now, you could say this is Spider-Man at night because he did get these colors. But nothing beats that really nice nearly cell shaded that would have been awesome too reds and blues and of course this is not the first time the superposable body was used we got web man you got race car driver spider-man i got a whole host of different multi-articulated spider-mans but the one i'm still missing is actually the symbiote one i gotta get that guy eventually always on the lookout for more toy biz figures especially to do videos right but when you got spider-man showing up well then you gotta have your villain or anti-hero i guess you could say so enter michael morbius and he's going for that job for dr kirk connor's assistant he starts messing around with a neogenic recombinator and also a sample of peter parker's blood i mean plasma so you could say the original morbius figure he looked good he was just morbius of course he's got these giant white arms with the big veins and such no suckers on his hands right that was how morbius took blood they couldn't have him biting or though it kind of looked like it started that way and then they went the whole blood draining route but you can see he push his legs and he would turn into morbius which hey that works very cool very almost accurate cartoon face but he's still stuck with the black hair now with this new morbius nice face to him nice wash 
everything. It makes him pop a little bit more. And he's got the blue hair. And it goes well with the look of Morbius, especially with the cartoon. So everything fits better. But of course, when you transform in the human mode, now he's a blue-haired human, or as in terms... But see what I mean? You need both figures to make this transformation work. But in either case, they both have the white arms with the veins. So it works and it doesn't, but I'm so happy to have this blue version. Because finally, when you have him teamed up with Blade or Black Cat straight from the animated series, well, that looks pretty dang good. And to finally have a blue-haired Morbius after all this time... Can't tell you how awesome that is. Although I will say the actual figure that was on the back of the Spider-Man wave card, that's the Morbius that would have been ideal. Now they still didn't get the shirt, right? He's supposed to have a green shirt. And speaking of red shirts, what is with Toy Biz and all the red shirts? Even when it's not close to being the actual figure's model, they put the red shirts on them. But red shirts aside, let's get back to season two. So with the help of Dr. Mariah Crawford making a serum, who she blatantly admits she expected this, even though she gave it to him, Spider-Man mutates further and gains six arms. Now this figure, while it is well done, it looks good, it doesn't have its mechanism anymore in terms of them rotating up and down when you push the legs. The other half of this figure is that it's completely inaccurate. Spider-Man actually got his six arms in the cartoon, at least, while he had his pajamas on. It's pretty funny. Slippers, too. But he didn't have his Spider-Man costume on. In the comics, he kind of did, although it didn't have this shredding of the costume. So it's an interesting repaint, but one that doesn't elevate the original, as you can see. The very first six-armed Spider-Man nailed it. He cut up his costume, threw it over, and went out looking for Morbius and everything else. So that looks the best. Plus, it has the mechanism where you squeeze the legs and does whatever this is supposed to do. Really cool articulation on this one. The new one, not so bad, right? But in the case, this is the one you're going to want to get in terms of animated continuity because the Punisher is now after you. Yeah, that's right. Frank Castle shows up in the animated series in this sweet dusta, man. And he's got this awesome jacket, blue suit, white skull, and the headband. And this is all we wanted with the original first release of the Punisher. But they did the black and white costume, which totally works. But this is the one straight from the animated series. This is the most animated series Spider-Man figure to date, right? And the knife fits in his boot. Whereas the very first release, the knife holster was a little bit too small. You couldn't get the knife in there. It always stuck out a little bit. So they have fixed that problem, which is actually pretty awesome they did that. But it's really just the fact of the jacket. The jacket looks great. He's got the blue headband. It was... Hinted at that the jacket was supposed to be covering the skull, right? Standards and practices of the Fox kids were like, uh, let's not have a, a skull guy chest, you know? Remember even Terry Lee, she's like, it's not a tattoo, it's a shirt. But as you can see, there were three Toy Biz Punishers released. You had the Hearts of Darkness three-pack Punisher. You had the standard black and white from the original Spider-Man animated wave. And then you had this new one. Didn't come with any weapons for this new one, but you can borrow from the other figures as I did. Because once again, yeah, we're back to hunting Spider-Man. According to Chip, we're gonna, we're gonna bring him in, right? We're gonna bring him in just nice and easy. Get back in good graces with the law. Because J. Jonah Jameson wants to turn this guy from a vigilante into a hero, right? Just like modern day news. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson gets his official first figure. Not just a head for the chameleon these days. He's got his actual cloth goods and look from the cartoon. And it works for the most part, we'll just say. He's got the correct colored tie. He's got the shirt. Well, once you open it up, you're like, hey, wait a minute. J. Jonah, he's, uh, he's pretty ripped for a, a, a spry old guy. Older guy, we'll say. His age varies. <laughs> But yeah, he's just a Mr. Fantastic repurpose. No gummy arms, but he's got articulation in the legs so you can see. Yeah, just reuse upon reuse for the old, old Toy Biz days. But it works and it's cool because they really did J. Jonah Jameson justice for this figure. That's for sure. But back to the storyline, of course. Now, Spider-Man gets blasted, falls into a warehouse, and he's crawling for dear life. Can't end this way, right? Well, no, it definitely does not because he mutates even further into the man spider and this is another repaint where much like the six arm spider-man it's a cool repaint but the first release actually was we'll say more spot on even though the design is a little bit all over the place it's more 
comic bookish other than the animated series look. But he articulates well. I love all the different arms. The arms don't have that weird orange hand that the first one have. See, if you look at the cartoon, especially if you look at the last one, the brighter colors of the red and blues really kind of elevate this figure. Sure, the darker tone skin is cool looking, but it was gray largely. The head is completely different in the animated series, but I definitely like this version better, just also in terms of sheer nostalgia, which Dr. Maria Crawford gets on the horn after hearing the news and goes, Sergey! <laughs> And he flies from wherever he was and he arrives in New York. Now, this again is more of a comics version of Craven the Hunter. He does have a lot more paint going on, a lot more paint apps, especially in the pants and everything else. The face looks a little bit more crisp. He comes with a solid black spear. And like all the other figures, minus Morbius, he used to have a, a spear throwing mechanism in his arm. They've taken that out. So he's just a standard action figure now, same exact articulation, again, more comic book accurate than animated series, which, hey, they already went full-blown with animated series. Kind of cool to get the comic book one now, especially for the comic book nerds. So, as you can see, the differences on the left, a lot more animated series. On the right, more comic book. Very cool to see Craven, even though, let's say comic to animated series, the idea of the character heavily differentiates we'll just say and of course the punisher and craven well they put aside their differences and team up to help spider-man well, the punisher doesn't really want to but he ends up doing it and hey you know what dr maria crawford administers a serum punisher pulls out spider-man's mask which he just wanted to keep as a keepsake and bingo bango spider-man's neogenic nightmare is over well, at least for now. That's what I thought when I was a kid, right? But yes, Spider-Man goes back and celebrates the day. It's a glorious morning, right? To be Spider-Man. Of course, until Scorpion and Vulture show up at the end of the season. And then, of course, that brings us to the Lizard. Through Scorpion's and Vulture's entanglement, Dr. Kirk Connors gets kidnapped. And along with Dr. Farley Stillwell, the Lizard shows back up as well. Now, this is an interesting lizard figure. I really like the cloth goods lab coat. He's really just missing that Kirk Connors name tag at this point. But it's a nice attempt, but it really just doesn't fit a whole heck of a lot. The lab coat, if anything, is the best aspect because the tail is entirely too big. He's got some really nice articulation and paint, but he's got this giant oversized, more comic book type head, but I do like the purples, the black shirt, and you can Velcro the lab coat together. So there's a lot of good aspects to it, but in terms of being Spider-Man animated accurate, kind of goes the other route because you can see they took previous lizard figures and kind of mushed them together, specifically this later one with the whole weird armor with the daredevil and a... <laughs> So you got the tail from this guy, and then you got the more basic lab-coated lizard, which, yes, there is a red version as well. And at the end of the day, everything gets wrapped up. Spider-Man's mutated blood ends up staying in the vulture, which terrifyingly morphs him into a man-vulture, we'll say. Scorpion runs off into the distance, so does Farley Stillwell. The lizard seemingly cured of his disease until later episodes. And finally, Spider-Man returns to a normal wall-crawling lifestyle so that's gonna wrap it up for my look at the 1998 toy biz monster mayhem box set which again is a nice wrap up to the entirety of the old spider-man animated line there's a lot of figures that in this box set we needed we needed a blue-haired morbius we needed the trench-coated punisher and heck we sure as heck needed a J. Jonah Jameson. The other ones are nice for comic book fans. And we got a nice Spider-Man animated inspired figure to boot. Multi-articulated. That's always cool to see. So again, I'll reiterate, this is a nice nod, a nice love letter to the entirety of the animated series. Sure, I would have loved to have seen more characters. Characters we never got figures of. But with everything happening these days, with Marvel Legends making animated X-Men figures, Spider-Man retro figures... Sky's the limit, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a whole heck of a lot more animated Spider-Man and animated Marvel Universe figures in the future. So, I am curious to know what you guys think about this box set. Did you have it as a kid? Do you have it now? Or are you on the lookout for it because you're like, wait a minute, I never knew about this? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Monster Mayhem. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, thank you 
so, so much to everyone who has watched all these years of my Spider-Man the Animated Series Retro Shiz videos. This may be the end of the figures, but we got one last video to kind of wrap everything up real nicely. Nice playset, if you catch my drift. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.